All right, the State Department striking back at this British security agent who claims he witnessed the attack in Benghazi. In fact, hopped over the wall and confronted one of the attackers. Watch this on 60 Minutes. I said, what's going on? He said, oh, we're getting attacked. And I said, how many? And he said, they're all over the compound. And I, I was shocked. I didn't know what to say. And uh, I said, well, just keep fighting. I, I'm on my way. Wow. Uh, but a report leaked to the Washington Post claims the security agent was unable to get to the consulate that night. Is it true? Or is this just another attempt to discredit a seemingly very credible witness about those attacks, who witnessed those attacks, trying to get to the bottom of this, and he's actually been to Benghazi and back, is the member of the House Oversight and Reform Committee, Utah Congressman Jason Chavitz. Congressman, they not only, they not only rebuked his story at the Washington Post, they also outed his name. What's going on here? That is, that is done to endanger his life. It's one of the most reprehensible things you could possibly do. This is a gentleman who has served his nation and to help the United States uh, for them to go out and to purposely endanger his life by revealing a covert agent's name out in the public is just, it's just one of the worst things you could possibly see. And what about the fact that they said that in order, he said they were going to attack the British and they were going to attack us after, and they were just waiting in Benghazi for this attack to happen. So therefore, there'd be no basis to say this was a video or a movie that would cause this type of violence. Look, left to their own device, the White House, the State Department, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama themselves would lead you to believe that it was a video gone awry. That never, ever happened. It was never, ever true. We were sold a lie, and it wasn't true. And there were people like this and Colonel Wood and others who had foreshadowed the fact that this was probably going to happen because they did attack the Red Cross. Right. They did have an assassination attempt. They did uh, foreshadow that they were going to attack America, and then they did. For the third time, by the way. All right, just before we leave this, do you believe the White House fed the Washington Post that story? I don't know who did it, but to release a covert agent's name to endanger his life should be a, an absolute outrage in this town. And if they right. want to get to the truth, go ahead and release the documents for the interview that he had the day after the attack and the interview that he had at his home a few days after that. If you want to be open and transparent, release those documents, and right. I think you'll find a different story. Do you think the State Department would be more likely to leak it? I don't know, but we should find out who did it because this is just, this is one of the tactics that you see is that you go out and disparage somebody, attack him personally, and put his life in danger. He'll never be able to work at that level again in this right. industry. It's just absolutely outrageous. All right, now, Senator Lindsey Graham said, I want to see the transcripts of the FBI interviews with the survivors. I want to interview survivors of this attack. What's your take on that? The military should come clean and release the after-action reports to the United States Congress so we can re review those. Some, some people say they don't even have it, which if you're in the military and you can't say that there's a, an after-action report, come on. Anybody who's ever served in the military knows there has to be those documents. We right. haven't seen those. The FBI interviews that were done in the, in the hours after the attack, we should be able to see those. And then we need to get in public people who were on the ground, Americans, who went through that horrific attack. That's what has to happen. The man known as Morgan Jones repeated a phrase that we've heard way too much. They were told not to go to the fight. Not yeah. to go to the fight. Who is giving the stand-down order? Hey, I, I'm telling you, there is more than one account of people being told that they cannot engage in the fight. And, and that is so contrary to what President Obama has said that that, again, necessitates to get these people in public before the American people, before the victims' families, and be able to tell their story. To date, that hasn't happened, and I just find that totally unacceptable, more than a year after the fact. Right, and I guess the message being sent to you, if you come forward, uh, they're gonna, someone's going after you. I don't know who this force is, but they're looking to take you down. Congressman Chavis, thanks so much. Thanks, Mark. All right, uh, 19